Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Trash Talk. Well, you have five minute Mondays paving the way, but this is Trash Talk, guys. This is Trash Talk, but let's get Trash Talk, Trash Talk correct. So, what this is, is that we're not trashing people. We are merely speaking opinions, right? Because we all have them, just like assholes, whatever. Opinions. But it's a trash talk type of episode that gives it a little, little flair, a little spunk, a little kick in the ass. I like it. Plus, I like the logo. I mean, my host made it. He's amazing. So there's that. Um, welcome back to our first episode back in 2024. Um, I'll be calling in my host here in a minute. But I think that starting off this year with a lot of stuff that has been happening, um, we're going to slowly kind of just graze over a few things, get deep into some things, show you a video, um, some things that are pretty prominent in what's happening here, especially in pro wrestling. Um, now, I, I'm not here to put words in people's mouths. These are merely my, like, my perspective, my opinions, and you bounce it off with people, and you just come up to what you think, perhaps, right? And then I'm going to say, watch this, and you be the judge. Okay, so I I think that and how we're going to start is the evolution of independence and how evolution of independent wrestlers and how it's so important um, to see the two come together with big organizations and not so much independence, but now we're seeing, well, let's say on the spectrum, a smaller league. Um, of TNA becoming more and more involved with the WWE, which is so exciting. And especially for the woman that it happened to. So before we get into it, um, let's call on our host with the most. Um, hey, you. Oh, Marshy Marsh and the Marsh Bunch. So I know that you're having some computer problems and whatnot. So we're going to get you in and out. So if you see him fade in and out, it's because he's correcting his system and then he's going to pop back in. So um, just to let you know that, I mean, hey, he's very smart on the computer. It's nothing to do with him. He am just connecting his bad connection through the Ooh. company here. So there, just needed to air that out. No. So I think this is really huge. So I don't know, but Royal Rumble to me this year, um, I think set, I felt different about it because it really, Royal Rumble has set the precedence to really what uh, Royal, um, well, what WrestleMania is. And I say that because it is the road to WrestleMania and how they emphasize on that and how strong that is. And when I saw it this year, I have never in my life just, you know how you have, you have those aha moments? Like after all these years and times and I'm thinking, I had this aha moment and go, wow, so this is really what Royal Rumble's for. You know, and I'm thinking, I thought then, God, I was a dumbass. I should have just took my spot. I should have said, yes, I could have done it when I was in the Royal Rumble. And because I just had my total knee replacements only seven months before then, I shouldn't have said anything and I could have went in there and stayed into the very last spot. And I think, and I feel now after watching this year's Royal Rumble, that's why I never got used again, probably because I feel they really did. I feel like they really wanted to use me then and then do other things. But because I said no, and what I'm getting to is I was supposed to have ivory spot. That was me being in there that long. And so I was supposed to be in that spot, but because of my knee, they backed off and they put me in my spot where I was, where Nia Jax threw me over. And no, Nia didn't hurt me. She threw me over really nice, by the way. Good Lord, let's just stop that bullshit right now. And so, and it was great, you know? Um, and my interaction with Asuka, and I think it was Trinity at the time where I got to clothesline both of them, it was fucking amazing. So. That all of that thought process just with this year's Royal Rumble really woke me up and said, God, what a dumbass Medusa. 
Hey, you should have just kept your mouth shut because I, I could go, but I wanted to be honest with them. I wanted to tell them that, Hey, this is it. This is me. I'm still going to go. Yeah. I think that right there, people is calling missing your opportunity. I missed my opportunity. And I feel that they may have used me more after that. Now you see me pop up on NXT once in a while. You see me do other things. You know, stuff like that, but nothing. You saw me do anything in the ring after that, did you really? No. Damn it. So back to Royal Rumble and this. So as you saw, don't you feel that I think the biggest thing for Royal Rumble, and it's becoming the, epi it's just, it's the classic where people want to point to the WrestleMania. I'm going there. And that would be the greatest thing for me. For me, if I was a you know in there today, a talent, and that would be my goal, like to get to WrestleMania to win it because I want to point to the WrestleMania yeah. point. It's just that little thing to say, I got to do it. You may yeah. not win WrestleMania, but you get to go and you get to point to that damn sign. I think that's becoming a bigger icon than anything. You it's remarkable. Even the picture that they have of Bailey pointing. They yeah. panned out and you can see the entire audience is pointing with her. That They're is becoming pointing. the trend. And I get chills. I was so happy. And by the way, Bailey winning the Royal Rumble. Fucking finally. I mean, that kid does. That kid is good. She's good, good, good. And I do want to say that since we're on trash talk, there's another podcast out there that just fucking trashed her. And said that she's, you know, she's the Karen of of interviews and she needs to stifle her fucking mouth because she can't she can't cut a promo worth shit. I'm like, That's are you watching the same one I'm watching? Listen, you know, Steve Austin, I remember when he used to try to cut a promo in WCW. Nobody does this shit overnight, right? So I don't know. I don't know why they feel, but everyone, you know, on, on, on the show, all the hosts agreed. And I, I, I like it that you and I do not even, I mean, you and I don't agree a lot, but we fucking get along because it's honesty. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about her interviews? Uh, I know that Cornette um, is a hot button and he's very, uh, you know, opinionated and people you know like him, don't like him, whatever. But, I think that one thing that can't be denied is he's one of the best talkers to have ever come through, right? One of the best, yeah. One, he's not there's several I'm, out there. Yeah, there's a, a bunch of people, but he's well known strictly because of his talking, not because of his bump taking, right? Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. He, I don't know. <laughs> he <could be> bumps, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, and I'm sure his bad hip will tell me otherwise. But uh, <laughs> one thing he has said about Bailey is that he thinks she has a long future ahead of her as a manager because she's such a good talker. And that's just to say, if Jim Cornette's endorsing someone as a talker, that's something notable. Whoever's saying she can't talk at all is just not watching. Uh, not should listening. I say that? Should I say the name? Should I give it's up, up to the you. podcast? I, I didn't. I haven't heard it. It's up to you. I'm not trying to bury anybody. I'm just saying, like, she did struggle on the mic when she first got there, for sure. But she's come a long way. Yeah, but we all have. We yeah. all have Vern Gagne kept putting my dumb ass on TV for years. <laughs> and I could not be, I would look like a deer in headlights. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it I was like horrible, but he kept you're doing it because he believed in me. Yeah. yeah. Cause you'll get there. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I think good. she would be a great manager. I think she'll definitely stay in wrestling. If she, you know, if yes. she chooses great, because she'd be a great asset. I yeah. see her very much. So in the back, you know, um, later on when she decides to retire, but I think she'll be a great motivator and back a great creator, um, yeah. script writer, whatever. And I, it just, yeah, she's a great conduit to put all them women together to feel good about themselves. Yeah. I think she would, she'd definitely be great. Uh, I teared up when she won because that's something I've been wanting. She's for a so well time. deserved. She got me back into wrestling. I stopped wrestling. Did stopped she really? Watching wrestling. Mm -hmm. I stopped watching for about 10 years. And then I was living in New York and Brooklyn Takeover and SummerSlam was all happening out there. And a bunch of friends from work were going. And I was like, well, you know what? I'll get the three free months of WWE Network and I'll watch what they're watching and just see what's going on. First thing I see is the NXT product. And I was like, oh, this is, you know, this is neat. 
This the is main fun. event. This is new. <laughs> yeah. Main event, Bailey versus Asuka. And I suddenly got wide eyed. I was like, what are we watching here? Like, this is crazy. And then the match blew me away. And I was like, who are these women? This is different than anything that I'm used to. Wow. And I, and I went back and watched all her stuff. And I followed her ever since. Like, and that was it. I didn't want to miss her. So I was like, I got to keep watching. Like, it got me back in. She got me hooked. So, wow. I, well, that's great. You know, when I met Bailey, she just, and she loves history and she loves, you know, legend stuff. And she said, Hey, hey, Blaze, I like your t shirt. And I was wearing one of my old Blaze t shirts. And I'm like, Oh, yeah, you do? Great. I should have fucking gave it to her. So I, when I know I'm going to be around her next time, I'm bringing one of my old under Blaze t-shirts and I'm going to give it to her. God bless America. I should have done it. Um, so anyway, I'm very happy for her. So again, with um, the whole, whole freaking Royal Rumble, and it was in my hometown. And I wanted to go so bad. I mean, I even called the office. Hey, you got some tickets? And they're like, we can't give them out. And then I saw everyone was there and they're like, thank you, WWE, for the tickets. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck's wrong with that? What? 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 That's bullshit. I'm calling out bullshit. What's I'm a fucking book? legend. You should give your legends at least tickets. So there you go. That's book. how I feel about that. Yeah. Damn it. So that's all right. I went and scheduled and I had to do TV and I was in another state anyway. So I just kind of regressed. So. All right. Um. So there's that. So with Royal Rumble, here's what's been happening. So they're starting to understand relationships without being threatened. And I think it's a great thing. And so I, I love how they've um, intertwined or connected a relationship with other federations. They're starting with TNA. That's good. And TNA, they um, brought, you know, in Royal Rumble, they'd bring back some people. They'd bring back some legends. Um, this year, I, I think that it was totally off script compared to what they did before. And I feel that a lot of people weren't used to that. So there was a lot of maybe negative because it was a little unknown and unpracticed, right? So, but when they brought people forward, I think they were people that were there, but they highlighted them in a way saying, hey, these are no new people. These are our characters. This is what we're doing. And when they brought out Cargill, oh my God. I mean, hello, Liv came back. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, that was great, right? And everyone thought Liv may, you know, would have won. Um, but I, again, real hardcore fans and people really thought it was Bailey's time and the dedication. It was all to Bailey as well. Um, I kind of thought maybe it would be live, um, just for another comeback. Um, and I was mainly going by how they were treating Bailey at this whole time saying, are they really going to give it to her this time? I don't know. Maybe I'll just better give live as my pick because, you know, but my feeling is, is I wanted Bailey. I thought it would be live, but they did give it to Bailey, so that's great. So we had Cargill in that. Who else was another? Trinity. Oh God, how can I forget Trinity? God bless. So and then Trinity. We kind of knew that was going to happen, but the thing is, it was kind of. I thought it was planned for a while. As soon as I saw her leave in TNA, I knew that this was happening. Um, you knew she was going back, and then of course all the rumble. Um, everyone thought you know Mercedes was going to show up. But on the internet, she made sure that it was all about her and she was trending right along with what was happening on Royal Rumble. It was kind of mm. smart. Um, very, I thought it was classy and, you know, hey, fuck, I'm here too. I'm going to trend just like you motherfuckers. And I just, hey, you got to give it to him. You know, it was great. She's good. I, think it, I think it was her birthday. So, you know, happy birthday, beautiful. Um, and uh, so everyone thought maybe one of those and even an AJ run in. So let me give you my scenario. I was I was definitely thinking, you know, um, back then, of course, I forgot right now, Trinity, but I knew when she was leaving TNA, I said, yeah, she's going to show up. I knew Cargill was going to do a pop in. You know who for sure? And I'm thinking, um, I didn't even think of TNA because in the past, as they're building the relationship with TNA, they brought back um, Mickey. Of course, you know, Mickey was there and she was with TNA and she brought her title. 
And this year she brought, uh, they brought back TNA gaining that relationship again. So we could see an ongoing thing like this. Um, and Gordon Grace, Jordan, I said, Gordon, Jordan Grace, Jordan Grace. I mean, by the grace of God, I she got the highest, biggest chance in their name and people screaming when she came out. It just, I think she, it was the pop of the night, right? And she looked comfortable out there. She was smiling. Um, I just, let me, re, let's get back to Jordan one second, because before I lose train of thought, I wanted to tell you who I thought if they could build a relationship with AEW, I was hoping that Soraya would do a run in. Oh, I, that could have been cool. No, that would have been hands down the fucking turn. That that would have that the kilter, the fucking needle would have went off the thing. I feel just because of the surprise and coming back and, uh, you know, a run in. And I think that, you know, why can't they do a one off with people and companies? Can't we get past the fucking whose dick is bigger? Can we just do business please you know what i mean um aj i don't know what that is <clears throat> maybe she's not interested i don't know maybe she's still you know under contract with wow if that's happening i don't know oh yeah but again that would be great too so back to jordan i i, I think that that whole relationship with jordan and them was a good step in the right direction because it showed a whole different side of WWE and the past. Um, you know, it's really hard for a company to come out of shit when it's been so convoluted with tux, you know, toxicity and it just, it's bad. And then, you know, kind of some of the bad shit that was thrown at WWE right before the Royal Rumble and sponsors dropping out and, you know, you've got other people coming on social media and just, you know, saying shit. And, you know, it's like, guys, people. What about the kids and the people that are there that have worked their asses off so hard for so long? And it's just making it miserable for them. And they and they are programmed <laughs> and probably spoke to that, hey, you can either go this way or that way, meaning make the best of it, do your best, do your job, and don't listen to the noise out there. Because at the end of the day, it's still going to go, but it's for the bigwigs to fucking figure out and how to control all this shit, right? And not let it harm the product and the kids and everybody in there that's worked so hard. I feel if you're going to reprogram or rebrand a brand that is so toxic in the past with everything that has happened, um, does it include one person? No, it's a whole plethora of fucking people. And you're going to have to gut it out. You're going to have to gut it out. You're going to have to gut out the players that were involved with everything that they knew what was going on um, <coughs> for a while. Um, because it's always going to be there. And then there's going to be hatred because they knew. I don't know. I, that's how I would. If I had people that were toxic in my company um, that were involved in heinous bullshit, you know, throughout their life and career, that's probably going to end up coming again. It's going to come out about them because it had something to do with the business. I would rethink a few things. Absolutely. So there's that. Your thought? Yeah. I mean, there was a little bit of a cloud over it because of all the, the lawsuit stuff. But I did think that the timing of it business-wise was great because we're so far removed from Vince's actually being in control that all that stuff that came out is kind of like, all right, well, WWE will continue on. He Absolutely. His, his hand hasn't been in creative in well over a year. So we don't have to be like, well, what's going to change on TV? Nothing. This is this was to me a really easy. Oh, there's a lawsuit. Then let's finally cut them yeah. out. Yeah, let them. <laughs> like I said, let them deal with it. Exactly. Leave the kids alone. Fuck. <laughs> let them concentrate. Have a good time. Fuck. They're they're lascivious fucking bullshit acts and the whatever they did. That's them. Go get them. Leave the exactly. kids alone and the fans because they enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's you how know? I felt about it. 
<laughs> Me too. Yeah, Me too. Not, I, like, all right, cool. Well, then bye. Let's move on. We're still watching Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Bailey. Yeah. I was waiting for one of those fucking things to come up. Yay. Ooh. Her old. Yeah. Hello. Buddies. Yeah. Oh, God. Steve Austin has one in his yard now to scare all the fucking peasants off in his farmyard like a like really? a scarecrow. So he put one of them up and I, he had it on social media and I pissed myself. I was like, oh, my God, that's so great. And I said, oh, maybe he's like, yeah, he's, you know, congratulating Bailey. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, so he celebrates. <laughs> yeah, so he he's gets... celebrating <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> and he's like, no, I'm scared off this fucking whatever for, you know, how he is. Yeah. But. Yeah, that was great. That was great. But, um, you know, it's interesting, too, you know, because when you when you what's so different from the past and today from the way in the past from wrestling today, a lot has changed. And I think that wrestling is very glamorized now. It, you, it's becoming more mainstream. You're seeing the talent in movies and commercials and they're doing red carpet and you you see them inner you know acting with you know top names in hollywood and so it's becoming pretty awesome especially like i think the biggest thing <clears throat> was the not the biggest because there's been others but the one that really made a splash now was the iron claw mm, and i great. say that because even first we had um, there was a movie way back when called Lipstick and Dynamite and oh my God. And then you had the wrestler and then there was other ones in between and then the Iron Claw. And the reason why I, I pick out the Iron Claw is some people will say, oh, it's so fucking depressing. It was so sad. It was okay. Guys, it was the story is a life. It was wrestling. Right. So <clears throat> I, I think that having the Iron Claw intermingle with Hollywood and then having Adele go out on social media saying that was my favorite. That was a favorite movie of mine. I mean, what does that tell you? Yeah. What does that tell you? So I quick retweeted her tweet and I said, well, then you need to read the woman who would be King. <laughs> Never missing an opportunity. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the woman DDP bitches. That's right. <laughs> Oh, he's self-marketing myself. Why not? No one else is going to do it. I did. I got a lot of likes, whatever you want to fucking call them. And there's like, I'm like, okay, right. Someone's going to see it. You never know. Yeah. Maybe The Rock will. Dwayne, seven bucks productions. Come on. No. You may have had seven dollars. I had zero. Come in, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you had seven times my wealth. <laughs> yeah. Seven. <laughs> Now let's make it this movie. Let's make this book into a movie and make seven million. I'd like to make a series out of it. Like, you know, how you how they do movies and it's like eight episodes going into it. Oh my god. Oh, like a Netflix so, series or something. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, speaking of Netflix and series and the rock. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey, we both went like this. That was yeah. like, what are we? A tree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're hey, we're celebrating Bailey. Yeah. Oh, thank <laughs> God your computer is slow. You looked really funny now. Um, <laughs> that looked really good. Okay, so so here we go. Speaking of back in the day and today and wrestling, a lot of people really didn't treat themselves like a business, like an entity. And I don't know if there were others that thought like I did in the business, but when I got into the business, I you know, thought of a name and I right away trademarked the name, became a corporation and everyone said I was batshit crazy. Like the boys would be like, who the fuck she thinks she is? She even has a business card. And I'm like, yeah, what's wrong with that? I was a little entrepreneur before you even started. So I, I there's a point to this and it comes full circle to the rock. And so I trademarked my name and I owned it and I never sign off onto it, you know, for third party, sell it, do this and that. That's why you have lawyers. But um, yeah, so I've always had control of the name. And then so fast forward, when I got hired to, the, you know, with the WWE, WWF back then, 
I, you know, I'm like, Medu you know, Vince is like, Medusa is a great name. Like, I'm like, yeah, I work so hard for that. I don't want to give that up. <laughs> and the phone call was complete silent. So again, I thought I was fired before I was even hired. He goes, that's not a problem. We'll think of a name. So I actually had kind of a name in the back of my head. And to use a different name, because I thought, well, this ain't going to last forever. And I can always go back to Medusa. You know, I didn't know for sure, but that's what I was thinking. But the name I had was Alundra Blaze. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm going to do this right. Because if I think of a name with A, I'm going to be first <laughs> in every book. And people are going to see me first. And magazine, and whatever. I was thinking at school, sitting in the desks, and they call you by name. Okay, anyway. So A, B, Alundra Blaze. So if they try to fuck me with my first name, B, Blaze. Ingenious. And then C, I thought, okay, Alundra Blaze Champion. ABCs, baby. There, you just been schooled on Medusa's 101 in pro wrestling. Okay, so, okay. So here, I don't know. It, it was maybe in 2000, two, three, four, five, somewhere around there. Um, and we got a clip here we're going to show you, but hold on, of The Rock. So you see, um, some things happening, right? So not only um, are things changing so fast, but people are not sitting in front of that big fat TV anymore, right? Um, you know, with potato chips and a beer. I mean, I sure the hell not. So I know I'm always going on the fly and I have that. So I'm, I watch shit on the app all the time. In fact, I told my husband to drop the whole fucking cable. Why, why are we paying 200 something dollars for a fucking cable when our internet alone is almost 150 bucks? I mean, this is insane. That's a monopoly. It's bullshit. <laughs> really? Why are we fucking paying that? Drop it because everything's on apps. So you can pick and choose what you want to see. And of course, I, I don't like that because I feel like we're going back to the old TV days where you had your certain channel, you know, and then they made it one only whatever. Now we're kind of going back at the Internet. Go back what's works, what they're doing with the apps so you can individually pay them. So you're paying $14 here. You're paying $20 here. You're paying $5 there. Pretty soon it adds up back to your fucking cable bill. But you get to see what you want to see. So that being said. Things are moving fast. Things are happening. So pro wrestling's popular. Oh, Hollywood knows that. Everybody knows that. It's going to be around for a while, but it does go through its pinnacles. I like it does this. It's going to hit bottom, stay, and it's going to be high. It's going to be low. Okay. However, the fans are always going to follow, you know, sponsorships, all of this stuff is going to differ and who they want. That way they can pick and choose who has what. But the CW got really smart. And they were thinking like, oh, good old Ted Turner when he was running pro wrestling from Georgia Championship Wrestling probably back in the day, right? He had it on his cable. And then he wanted to bring it forward on WCW and, you know, Ted Turner brought uh, the whole thing. So that's exactly what's happening. Again, CW says, oh, wrestling's fucking popular. So CW on their app only has... NWA. Um, it has NXT. And I believe it has TNA. So let's bring on our producer here. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Can we confirm that TNA is on CW? Oh my God. You're the one who told me. I believed you. Let me look it up right now. TNA. <laughs> well, I heard it was, and I or they're signing the deal or something. I don't know. So that's why I'm thinking another reason why, you know, TNA and WWE is working together because they are on CW on NXT and I think TNA and NWA. So it'd be great to see WWE pull in some NWA people. Yeah. Hey, right. Maybe we'll see Camille Brickhouse show up sometime nice. soon. Right. Okay. Um, they aren't, they are on TNA plus, which is their own streaming uh, service, which is through Endeavor streaming, which is which still Endeavor notable. is TKO. Well, Yes, it's under the TKO umbrella, but it's sort of like how Amazon had um, the Amazon shopping thing that people would use. It's a it's a part of what they do. It's not necessarily like TNA is not owned by them. They're just in partnership with that streaming service. To Correct. But what a great relationship. So I just yeah. wanted to show how things 
are so intertwined, but it makes sense why WWE is working with Scott DeMore of TNA because basically they're in, I, that's the wrong word anymore to say, but they're in relations with Endeavor, which yeah. is bought WWE and now has totally took Raw and put them on a platform called Netflix. So you have Raw on Netflix, you have NXT and SmackDown on CW. Nope. Nope. SmackDown's NXT's on, on CW? CW? No. SmackDown got bought by USA. Oh, they did get done. Oh, your kid. That must have just happened. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was the first deal they announced. But yeah, so <clears> USA <throat> got SmackDown, CW picked up NXT, and then Netflix got Raw. Like, so they're split, but in kind of a really cool way that, like, you can pick and choose which ones, and then they can sit there and watch the ratings and see who, whatever. But whatever. I think it's great. Um, and so, so now you have all three of these platforms, but Endeavor, but you know, over major, what, 51%, whatever they have at WWE, which in junction, they went and got Netflix a deal with, um, WW, with Raw. Yeah. But I think the big thing here is how we're going to sell this. How are we going to get and accept Netflix and Raw together and get the deal? Who can we, what can we, who is the selling point here? Ah. Let's see. There's the rock. Oh, there's the rock. But, but rock has his own productions. Why doesn't he have it on his TV? Right? I don't know any of this, but why wouldn't they have seven bucks productions running it on their own app? Right? That could all have been done. So I'm thinking, why would they pass? Why would they pass and the rock sell it? With his name with Netflix, because there had to be a hook. Maybe allegedly WWE still owned the Rock's name. And in negotiations, Rock said, Hey, the only way I'm going to do this, otherwise, I'm going to do it and put it on my own. <laughs> or maybe whatever. I don't know. It's a good idea. But well, maybe he didn't, maybe he didn't own his name, but maybe he thought he did. And past previous and then found out during negotiations oh no you don't and this whole time now he wants the name back and that was part of the deal well seven bucks production doesn't own any kind of streaming services they're just no, i'm saying there's something they could have talked about before making the deal and say hey let's make our own streaming service i don't know I'm just throwing shit out there see if it sticks i think something that would make a lot of sense though is one of the things that deal with netflix uh that's in there is that they want to make ip specific shows they want to take uh. wwe ip like the characters and actually do standalone products that's not the weekly raw mm -hmm. and i'm thinking who better to produce the undertaker story miniseries than seven bucks production you know what i mean that's how that's intertwined so they're gonna yeah so perhaps they could be doing all of that with netflix and be a part of that yeah, yeah. that's yeah definitely great thinking but what do you think about the negotiations of him saying, I want to own my name? I thought, I thought he that, owned it. Yeah, I pulled a clip. I found it back in 2004. He claimed that he owned it. Plus, you think about Project Rock is out there. We saw Young Rock and to be all like, oh, he, he's he got to own it, right? Like, But, but maybe had, not. Maybe he had to give a lot of percentage to WWE when doing that. We don't know. Let, let me see that. You got that clip? Yeah. Okay, let's watch this clip, everybody. Give up the WWE and do the acting full time. Is Vince going to let you keep the name The Rock? I actually own it. Oh, you do? Oh, do how'd you now. get yeah. that? Did you have to fight him for it? No, you know what? Honestly, it was an easy conversation. You're telling me you went into Vince McMahon's office specifically. Did you tell him what you wanted to talk about? No, I, I, this is how it went down. I, I went to him, I talked to him, and he knew you know, what I wanted to do after wrestling. Because, you know, I, I've been able to accomplish a lot, which is, which has always been great for me. And Vince doesn't give away anything for I free. I know he doesn't, no. So, and I saw you in the movies. You were trying to move away to the Dwayne Johnson thing. No, I wasn't. I've always been billed as a rock, but I, I, over time, especially this past year, uh, it's been a media thing. Like, they've been they've been mm -hmm. writing and putting out their Dwayne right. Johnson. Right, he was Johnson, pushing but, his oh, thing. Oh, that's not your thing? But, no, no, no. I saw no, it in the oh, credits, that, though. <laughs> 
I think it's yeah. clever. No, no, it's a rock. Yeah, you sure? I'm positive. See, I heard Vince was making. <laughs> Vince <laughs> owns a piece of the movies that you're in because he owns the name The Rock and he owns you. That's what I heard. N no, I, I now I own the name The Rock. And but does he still own now? you? <laughs> yeah, he owns yeah. my job. <laughs> but uh, do you have to still wrestle? I what, do not. What would be no. the ramifications if you left wrestling? Could could Vince take back the name The Rock? No, no, no. I have my name. I own my name. And, and, wow. And all rights. And you it. didn't have to pay for it. I did not have to pay for it. Is Vince gone insane? No. Is this unprecedented? <laughs> no, it is. Really? Yeah. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I feel that you're tell you're not telling the whole truth here. That, that, in other words, he gave you the name <laughs> with the stipulation that you would do X amount of wrestling matches. No, 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 not at all. My 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 contract is up this year. I was shocked. Will that you, you renew? Were back. I'm not too sure. You're not gonna. You're making tons of dough in the movies. <laughs> I'm not. I'm the less not exposure, sure. the better. You know what I mean. You got to lay yeah. back off that. Boy, I, I can read shocked. faces. Uh, really? Oh no, 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 man! He came back this year, there was a whole big promotion. I was like, he's going to wrestle again. He's yeah. a movie star. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I went back. I went back to the garden. That's amazing. What do you know about Vince that we should? I know, know. It's, yeah. it's not like There's that. Something going you know, on? Here. No, I, I can be honest with you. It's just oh, I, I had right a conversation, there. and I said, "This is what I want to do." And this is what I want to do. Okay. No, he. You know what? He. He just said. He said, "I'm proud of you, man." That was The Rock talking about how he owned the name there. In 2004. In 2004, right before his contract was up. I feel like that that could be a thing. If he's asking for the IP now. Yeah. It makes me wonder what was he being told then versus what was actually happening then, and what was made yes. then. What will I do for you when you leave versus what I did for you once you left? Yes. You know I, I mean? think he, I, I think innocently enough, even by lawyers he had back then, could have been a whole different belief. Yeah. 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 And then, because the only reason why I say that or feel that is, is why ask for it then now? Yeah. I don't know. I'm glad I owned mine. Holy yeah. shit. Guys, this is just an experience. Even the wrestlers, anybody getting into any business or whatever, when it comes to trademarking, make sure you have a damn good trademark lawyer in this. This is a good example. We don't know. We 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 would we won't ever know, you know, the truth. But be careful because video's out there. <laughs> yeah. So you have this in 2004 and then him coming back asking for it. So maybe. I'm just on just on Dwayne's defense here. Maybe there was something in there that was nicely hidden or manipulated that it it might have kicked back and he owned it on something he may have said or did. You know how that shit works in contracts. Right. Yeah. Or maybe it was who knows, but or maybe there was a lapse maybe, in time and the WWE scooped it back yeah. up or something, you know. Maybe because of something was sold and third party renegotiated and went back. Boy, who knows? It could have been a lot of ifs, ifs, ifs. Yeah. But that just tells all that from 2004 now. Do we have a clip of, hit of them, of anything talking about him have to um, ask mm -hmm. for it now? That's all I could find there. But the in the contract, because there's some podcasts that read through the, the, the deal that they made. And um, do we have a copy of that. We don't have a, uh, a, a. I don't. I don't have okay. a copy of the thing. But uh, right. in there, it does say that he will own the the full IP of the name of the Rock. That was part of the stipulation of it, of the of joining the board for TKO. Okay. Um, wow. And what does that say about their IP uh, distribution of funds in general? If one of the yeah. richest people in the world is about to make a multi million dollar deal and says, "I won't unless I get this back," like how bad is that split? You know what I mean? How bad is that split? And this this is a tell all. I think this is great. I'm glad, you know, kudos for Dwayne. Because if anyone should have woke up was the talent of what mm -hmm. about what they're actually worth and what's going to be happening with all of this content. Can you imagine? Here's a contract. You're here. You get you get 150 a year, you get 750 a year, you get 3.2 million a year, but that's it. But let me tell you the jack that they make off of what can be happening all with this AI stuff in your image and your voice and your likeness. It's sure. unbelievable. Wait till you see what happens, what they're going to be doing with the talent today. I wonder, too, like to me, I felt like that I would have expected the reverse. I would it, it would expect that if you're joining the board, you have to give up your IP because now if you own the IP and you make have voting share in what the product does, 
How many times do you offer up yourself yeah. to get a bigger check? You know what I mean? Oh, we should put the rock on that t-shirt because now I know I'm going to get a much bigger check than if it doesn't say the rock on that shirt. You know what I mean? Well, whoever caught that, did that, came out with that, who the fuck is his lawyer is what I want to know. I want <laughs> yeah. We need him. <laughs> I need, no, hey, David, I love you. You've been my lawyer for over 30 years. Uh, yes. But maybe we can work hand in hand with Rock's lawyer. Yeah. yeah that's you call. Let's get you on the board. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be on the board. <laughs> I'm I with the IP. You want to hear it. But uh, John Cena has been public um, a couple of times as well about not owning the rights and being completely okay with that. It doesn't <gasps> sound like he has any desire to own the rights to his name. Oh, like, my God. I like his mentality with it. It's just interesting. Yeah, but okay. What is John's legal name? John Cena. John, but he just goes by John Cena. He doesn't go by John Harold Cena. It's just John Cena. John Cena is his name. Like, watch, he says it in the clip, too. Want me to pop it real quick? Okay, let's watch John Cena's clip, too. If your movie does well. Yeah. I mean, it probably will because uh, it's an action film. And yep. you have a built-in uh, audience. Uh, we know we can't that see uh, Vince McMahon, who is the founder of the <laughs> WWE, he's, yep. he's the big chief. He, is the guy. he will own That's your name. That's a good one. Yep. He, will, he gets a cut of all of your movies, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Is that the way it works? That's yep. what The Rock told me. Yep. Does that bother you? Absolutely not. Should he? Is he entitled to a cut of your movie action? Absolutely. Howard, before this, I was a, a kid in a small Massachusetts town uh, mowing lawns for a golf course. I don't mind kicking a percentage of my uh, my earnings to the person who gave me a chance and an opportunity. In Vince, in a sense, is your sensei. He's the exactly. one who really exactly. got and you if, going. If, if anything, that's a that's a sign of respect. I owe that guy a lot. And You're grateful. What, what no, name absolutely. does he own of yours, though? It, that's my government name. He owns what's called intellectual property. Right. He owns John Cena. Absolutely. That's not your real name. No, that's my government name. <laughs> and he owns it. Well, it's it's a weird concept, but in a way, yeah. <laughs> Oh he goodness. owns the name. So you words. won't be able to be yourself if you leave, Vince. Yeah, which is kind of cool. I can get another identity. Oh, he could just be somebody else. That's right. You did it. I well, I did it. China did it. You know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, you got to think of what China did too. Mm -hmm. Kind yeah. of. Hey, if you're not going to give me my name back, I'm just going to change my name to China. Boom. Oh fuck. Ultimate I thought warrior, that was pretty mastered. Yeah. Huh? Ultimate Warrior changed his name to Warrior, remember? That's pretty mastered. That is fucking base right there. So here is um, Cena. And so I'm going to go with Cena too here a bit. So Cena feels that because you know, I'm just a boy from Massachusetts, you know, slinging pizzas, whatever the hell he was doing. And I feel that, hey, he created this. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if it wasn't for him. And he can keep a percentage. I think that's fair, too, because he wouldn't be anything with him. But again, that's why there was that great relationship pushing him to be in movies. That Hey, when you have that machine behind you, of course, he's going to get all of that. Right. Yeah. He's going to get the opportunities, the marketing, the push. Why wouldn't you give a percentage? I would. I fucking would. And he does. He owns a Lundra. He gets his percentage. So do I. And plus, that was that was a promotion for the Marine. This was also 2004, maybe 2005, uh, which was also a WWE production movie. So he's still exactly. in movies at the time that were pushed by WWE. That's so. what I just said. Of course, yeah. they're going to do that. Of course, he's going to do, you know, whatever. And very well said. So you get the feeling of both. But here's, again, I got to go jump back to Dwayne because I love mindset. And that's the way I would think and I do think is that if, if I can have it all, I'm going to take it. <laughs> Right for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it sounds like. But if I can't control my own shit, neither are you. Yeah. But yeah. So I mean, I get both. I agree with. I agree with both. Yeah, I definitely uh, see both both perspectives as well. The idea of like you gave me the foundation to become what I've become, and then also the the belief okay. of you only got me so far. I had to take me further. You know. I would like to see a uh, an interview with him now with everything he's doing. You know, yeah. um, you you never know. Um, it'd be interesting. Maybe he could be a part of. Wouldn't that be something? Maybe they um they take. Uh, smackdown off of usa next and they put it with endeavor and uh ne another big one maybe it goes on netflix but hey let's get another person to push that and maybe 
Maybe John could come up and say, well, you know, I don't want to do those. But I own the IP. I know. <laughs> I was trying know. to find it because I could have sworn he did an interview with Chris Van Valet at one point where he mentioned the same exact story. And I could have sworn yeah. that was like the last couple years, like two, three years ago, tops. And uh, the interview I always was wanted to do an interview with Chris. He's good. Chris like, hell yeah. He goes, I'll interview you. We yeah. just got to get our schedules better. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And he's a nice guy. Mm. I got to meet him at the, I got to meet him one time too. And um, I got, I think I went up twice actually, but he was really nice. Mm. Good interview too. Very good. Yeah. Well, so, and there's, there, there's everything in a nutshell. Wow. What a busy, busy, busy fucking month in a yeah. <laughs> closing year, right? It's yeah. exciting. Again, wrestling's exciting. I mean, and things are moving fast. I mean, and that's the way this whole production is going to go. With the AI coming in, um, you're going to see some incredible things. Yeah. Um, in fact, it just, with AI, the music that you hear was we wrote it, but yet AI created the music to the Medusa song. Mm. Very incredible what. So that ought to scare the shit out of you. So <laughs> I bought, you know, you buy whatever you want on the app with AI to make music. You own the rights to it, but AI fucking made it. Yeah, that's neat. It's Isn't that crazy? So I just wanted to use that as an, you know, as an example to let people know. Sit down, strap in, bitches, because <laughs> it's going to be a ride. Deuce is coming for you and it won't be nice. It's not a face. She'll have you burning like a long trump place. From the States to Japan. She don't give a fuck, throwing belts in the can. I want to rock with the Deuce. Fear is no excuse. Baby, tell me what you say. Oh. 